So today's class is going to be on the uh, Delo Express matrix module, how to set it up, how to use it, what it's good for, and how it really can benefit you and the end user. We are going to get into how to set it up. We're going to actually create some matrix items, uh, a couple of different ones to show you live how this happens, how this works. So let's first off, let's discuss what the matrix is and how we utilize it. It is really for the creation of multiple items under a single menu items. And that's maybe a little bit confusing, but you're gonna have one menu item on the screen that then will open up to allow for a, just a huge number of items that can go underneath it or be actually uh, slave to it. Sometimes in programming, they're called daughter items or child items. And that's what this is. So you have the parent and then you have the child that's underneath it. This does allow for a huge number of items, dozens, hundreds, even thousands of items can be created actually with the click of a button. So I'll show you how you want, you set up your, your base item and then utilize it to create multiple items underneath. But think about how exponentially it can grow. If you have five sizes of sandwiches, five breads, five cheeses and five meats. So just five of each of those four categories, that equals up to 625 PLUs that will be created by the matrix module pretty much instantly. Jeff has uh, played with this in the testing lab where if you were to do um, 100 items times 100, so 100 sizes, 100 breads, 100 cheeses, 100 meats, you'd be somewhere around a million that would be created by the matrix. And he has done that in testing to make sure that we can handle those large amounts of items. So this is one area that you can really, really get into it. The, what you do is you set up the characteristics in the one item, the base item that is then carried forward to the others. This could be the price, the base price of the item, and then have the different add-ons for the different breads, cheeses, and whatever. You would then have the reporting and sales categories. So the sales categories are what's down the left-hand side of the screen, and the reporting categories would obviously be for the reports. You would set up your forced and advanced modifiers so that you could um, have those then follow into the child items. So you set them up one time. You also set up the printer and the KDS routing. So all of this is set up, actually all of this and more are set up in the base item that is then allows you to carry that forward to the individual items themselves. So it's most used in restaurants when you wanna create uh, sodas, small, medium, large, and all the different flavors. Sandwiches and subs, which is one of the categories we're gonna to do today. You can then also do beers, which is another one we're gonna do. So we're gonna do beers in, in a sandwich uh, matrix item today, and then wines. So what you have are different sized items with different flavors or different options that go along with it. That's really what you need to use the matrix for. It's not meant to build every item in the restaurant. It's meant to build certain categories or groups of items. In retail, it's used for anything with a size, color, or style, such as uh, shoes and clothing. So if you have a, uh, a pair of shoes or a, a style of shoe, that shoe is gonna range with about eight or 10 different sizes, but it's one shoe type, different SKUs for every different one for different sizes. So that's really what this is for, is to then allow in, in retail for you to have that size, color, and style mix up. So what we're going to do in, in a minute, I'm going to show you live what you go into the products area, open up matrix setup. Then we're going to get into create the base item where you then create your forced and advanced modifiers, kitchen routing, and then all, the, all these characteristics, whatever you set up in the base item, that's gonna carry forward. So what the more you can set up here, 
is less programming when you get to the individual item later on. Still in the matrix setup, you're going to give it a common name, which is the button name, the name that goes on the initial screen that the operator would press in order to open up all the different child items. You're going to put your default price in here. And you're then going to have the different columns. In the Adelo Express, you have four. So then you would, each one of those columns, you would add the items and the different descriptions and flavors and whatever. You can actually add price adjustments, both positive and negative. So in this case, if you had an item that you wish to upcharge for, you would actually have the opportunity to add a price for that upcharged item when you're building the matrix. You get to then preview the matrix, make preview the items. It'll be a list of items that will show on the screen that you get to look at to make sure it's the right description. It's It's got the description that you want. It's got the price that you want, that it's everything that you want before you hit the build items. Because once you build the items, it builds them all. And it's almost instant how fast it will build all those items. Puts them in the database. Then at the front of house, you sync the cloud database with the point of sale and you're up and running and ringing up items. It is truly, truly that simple. So I'm going to pause now and address some questions that came up in the, in the, the chat. Uh, this is not the pizza matrix. This is different. Pizza has a matrix flavor to it, but the pizza module is different. The pizza module has limitations of 10 sizes, for instance. You don't have limitations of 10 sizes here. You are, really don't have any limitations other than the four columns that you will use. So yes, pizza does have some matrix tendencies, but this is definitely different. And does it print red for add-on? Uh, no, the way it runs here is the item description will be one line. So there's pros and cons to matrix. You can have a matrix item that has one entire line where it will go small Diet Coke or six inch on white American cheese ham. So all that would be on one line. Whereas if you're doing it with the traditional method, you would have one line for six inch, and the next line for the bread type, the next line for the cheese type, and the next line for the meat type. So it make the, the receipt longer. Matrix makes it wider. So there's a different way to look at it. And yes, it does link to the online ordering. So yeah, whatever you put in the database at the point of sale level can be available at the online ordering level as well. So matrix, you can't have the item be displayed there. You set the price at the base level, and then every time you add an item to the matrix to build it, you have a choice of building the price there. So what this is doing is setting up a one PLU for that one item. So the six inch on white American cheese ham, that's one PLU. So when you're doing the reporting, you're actually going to report that the sales of that one item. Okay, why don't we take a look at this in action and maybe that'll stir some more questions. So I'm on my coffee demo. You go into products, and you drop down here to matrix. Now pizza setup module is different. It does have some of the tendencies, but it is different. Matrix. You would set up a base item. That's the first thing you do. So you would create the base item. You have to give it a name. We're going to do uh, craft beers on our first example. It's going to be in the beer category. And I'm going to use the default uh, beer reporting category as well. So say this would be the area on the point of sale. On the left-hand side of the screen, it would be under the beer tab. And then reports are going to roll into the beer category.
category there. Is it discountable? Yes or no? And this mix and match code, that is for really it's retail. So if you have t-shirts that are three for $10, they can mix and match those, any one of these different t-shirts, one from this style, one from this style, and one from this style. You would then put a mix and match code right there and it would allow you to have three different t-shirts in that three for $10 price. That's what a mix and match code is. We're not gonna use it for this particular one. So you come down now and you have the option of forced and advanced modifiers. In this case, we're doing craft beers. So we're not really gonna modify these. That's more for sandwiches and, and the subs and those things. You do have the ability to change the routing. So in this case, is it gonna to print to the kitchen printer or does it print to the bar printer? So you can alter that just like that. We're gonna turn it off for kitchen printer one and we're gonna put it onto bar printer. Same thing with kitchen video, you can have it print or not, not display or display up to the 20 different kitchen printers. Not doing the label and we're not really sorting it. Uh, this is just as a side note, when you're sending an order to the kitchen, you can arrange the items on the guest, on the ticket to the kitchen by putting them in order here. So a, a, a sort order of one puts it as the top of the ticket and a sort order of 99 puts it at the bottom. So is this an, an open order, an open price? No, it's taxable. It is in stock, it's not a weighted item. It is a bar item. And if you were running a uh, required beverage feature, then it would be a drink qualifier. Then here's, if there's any description, you would put it here. This would then allow you to two finger touch the button and it pop up the description. We're not doing forced or advanced modifiers. So we're gonna save this now. We now have our base item. This is our button description. This goes on the point of sale, single button that's then gonna allow the operator to go into that item. You want to, if you want to, you can put a picture for the button and a different picture for the detail and then the base price. So this is the base price of the uh, craft beer. We're gonna use matrix ordering and under column one, this is where I'm gonna put the different sizes. You do have an option for an alternate name. It could be a different language. An adjustment to the default price. I'm not gonna adjust the price on this for a glass. We're gonna make the default price of $3.50. That is the price for the glass of beer. I can now add another one. This one, I, I don't know. Just to be different, let's add a mug. And this one has an upcharge of 50 cents. Add another one, another size. Another upcharge. So now I have four sizes, glass, a mug that upcharges 50 cents, pint that upcharges 75, and a pitcher that upcharges 250. Now let's go in and add some flavors. What I've done is I've gone off to the internet and found some different uh, types of craft beers. Trying to make this a little more real for you.
So you do see that there are some limitations to the number of letters. I'll do one more, so we'll do four and four. I have no idea if these are any good. That'll be up to you guys. So now we have glass, mug, pitcher, and pint of these four different beers. One, two, three, four, actually five. So now we're going to do the preview. It then builds all the prices. And you'll now see glass and the price. Then you have the mug and you see the 50 cent upcharge. The pint and the 75% upcharge and the pitcher with the 250 upcharge. Once you yeah. visually confirm that, yeah, this is right, this is what I want and I don't need any alternate names, then I can just hit build matrix. Oh, it says common name cannot repeat. Okay. Those are now in the database. So let's go into beer, craft beer, and you can then scroll down. And here, here they are. They are now in the database. At this point, you can go into this and treat it like any other PLU. You can change the button color. You can add a button picture detail picture, anything that you want to change, you can go back and change. It is a regular, just a regular item in the database. Nothing to it. So at the point of sale, then, when you go into the point of sale, which I'll bring it up now, and now you're looking at my iPad screen. is log into the system and go to beers. It's already updated the database on the point of sale. So we now have craft beer, glass, and that's it. That's how you ring up with a matrix item. So you have the main item, which is your base item. So you do craft beer, and then you get to pick from this from the list of sizes and then the list of flavors. So you go to matrix, you pull down your base item, or you create one. In this case, we created craft beers. <laughs> And then you go down and fill in your columns. I did I did the column here was sizes, and then column here were flavors. All right, does the customer receipt show the upcharges? Does it show the 350 and four dollars? It shows the price inclusive of the choice. So when you're I go back over. So I go craft beer, glass, it shows the price. I go craft, pitcher, same, now it shows the inclusive price. So it does not show it broken out by a pitcher is going to be a certain amount versus a glass. It all is on one line. So when you run the report, the, the uh, movement report, 
this glass of Dale's pale ale, that is one PLU. Picture of Dale's pale ale is a separate PLU. So you get movement for each one. You get sales for each one. All right, we good on that? And the question is, the more items on one line, is the font smaller? No, it stays the same. There's a limit to a certain amount of characters that can you, you can put on a printer. It's like 32 or something. So you get to you get a certain amount of characters that you are limited to on that one line, and they are not smaller by automatically reducing. All right, any other questions on this before I move over and we do a bunch of sandwiches? Okay, we'll come back to my iPad here momentarily. Let's take a look at doing something a little more complex. Okay, you're seeing that screen. Yep, I have to make sure you're seeing the right screen. So let's create a new base item. This one, uh, call it Now we'll get into the extended settings. On this one, I'm going to let it print to the kitchen printer. If I leave it at default, it's going to print to the kitchen video. It is not an open price. It is taxable. But I do have some modifiers. I'm going to use advanced modifiers and not forced because I'm not doing temperatures and those type things. But I am going to have it do modifications. So let's take a look at what my templates are, what I have. Well, I've got one here called condiments that I use a lot on sandwiches. Let's use that one, that category. I've already got some in here. So there's the template name is, mod, is condiments. And what do we have in those? Well, we have barbecue sauce, onions, ketchup. Let's add some new ones to this. This is taking advantage of what we already have in the database. I'll have lettuce, tomato, mayo, all that mustard. Let's add that one. There's no ARP charges and I can put light, add, extra, only, side, a lot of mustard, a whole lot of mustard. So now I've given all those options there. That's how you add to a modifier group. So now I have barbecue sauce, onions, ketchup, mustard. Let's put one more in there. Let's put the good old mayo in it. Light add extra only on the side and then the two and three X. That's all that. Now I have a pretty good setup of condiments. Let's go ahead and save that. Now I have my advanced modifiers in there. Come back now and I'm going to add the button name. I'm not sure if I've used that before, but if I have, well, it'll, it'll tell me. So let's make the base price here. I'm thinking out loud. No, let's not. Let's don't put it. Let's do this. See if I can do it down here. I'd like to add it here where I do my sizes. So I do a six inch.
So I've got two sizes, six inch. I can do another size. Now I have four sizes. Let's add some bread types. No upcharge for that. So now I got four breads. Let's, let's do some cheeses. Here you can do an upcharge. And now I can do the meats. And now I have, let's see, we have four sizes, four breads, uh, three cheeses, and four meats. This is where we are. So a six inch white American cheese ham. There's the price. Jumping on down to the 12 inch. White bread, cheddar cheese, ham, and there's the price. These look good. Then you scroll until the end and go ahead and do the uh, build. So now all those items are built. So with food category, sandwiches, you have now all the items here. You can go back and make modifications and change the change the button picture, button colors, all these different things, just like a regular item. You can make all those changes here. So now let's take a look at the point of sale. So now to sync this you simply exit and log back in and then the database is now updated so there you have it six inch on wheat american cheese turkey here's your modifiers you can double touch with two fingers and that then gives you your choices of regular extra light only side double and triple two fingers will then allow you to make those choices once you're done you simply hit the done button and now you have your sandwich rung up you can see it's six inch wheat, American cheese, turkey, with light ketchup and extra mustard. 
So there was a question about smaller fonts. Well, it is on the modifiers, but that's standard in the system. So what questions do you have now? Can it tell the cook difference on chicken, sandwich, breast, or chopped? That would be the modifier. So yes, you would have a modifier for whether it's a chicken breast sandwich, chopped, sliced, whatever, those are modifiers. Based upon the questions, I think you're starting to get the power of this module and what it will do for you. So I just built a bunch of items all with one press of a button. At this right. time, Jerry, there's no other questions in the uh, chat. Covered everything, huh? Uh -huh. All right.